Good day, folks. A few days ago, GoPro launched something very interesting for the Hero 8 Black called GoPro Labs. GoPro Labs extends the capabilities of your Hero 8 Black and makes a very powerful camera even more powerful with a ton of new features. In order to access these new capabilities, you have to update the firmware on your Hero 8 Black. Now, it's not the standard firmware you get over the air. You have to go to the GoPro website and download it manually. But once you install it, you have a ton of new capabilities and some really interesting ones. So let's just jump right in and take a closer look. So GoPro Labs was launched a few days ago by GoPro, and I tell you, it's actually really interesting. I was a little skeptical at first at how useful it would be, but once I took a closer look at it, I was actually quite impressed of what you can now do with your Hero 8 Black. So I'll give you a brief explanation what it is first, and then we'll go in and take a look at some examples. GoPro made a press release about it, and it kind of goes into more detail. You should definitely go and read it. I'll include the links down below in the description of this video. But basically what it is, it's a whole bunch of experimental features that their engineers have been working on, and none of these have really made it to any release yet. Now GoPro doesn't want you to think of these new features as beta. They've been thoroughly tested. They're just experimental ideas that they've had that they haven't assigned to any camera yet. But with the GoPro Labs, you can go in and test them out today. Basically, you're gonna have to install some special firmware into your GoPro. It's a very simple procedure. It doesn't affect the performance of your camera and it doesn't take away any existing features that it does have. So to get this new firmware, you're gonna go to the GoPro website and go to the GoPro Labs webpage. You're gonna download the file to a computer or laptop. You're then gonna to wanna to take your memory card out of your GoPro and copy the files that you've just downloaded to it. All you do then is insert the memory card into your GoPro, power it on. It's gonna then read the firmware update off the memory card and start to install the GoPro Labs on your Hero 8 Black. Once you have it installed, it now allows your GoPro Hero 8 Black to read QR codes to perform various tasks. If you go to the GoPro Labs press release, you can see here they give a couple of examples of why this is useful. With the new GoPro Labs, you can actually set timed recording. For example, here they were launching rockets and they wanted to set up some GoPros to capture it. However, they have very strict rules when launching rockets. The GoPro could only get in there and set the cameras 72 hours before launch. So they placed the cameras and programmed them to start recording minutes before the rocket launched. So in those types of situations, that's a very useful tool. So anyways, let's go in and look at some of the things you can do with your Hero 8 Black once you have GoPro Labs installed. They have all the codes hosted at GitHub and again, I'll leave the link to it down below in the description of this video. So let's take a look at some of the options here. Uh, the first first one is a very simple one. It allows you to set precision date and time. As you can see, the QR code is updating as the time changes. So all we have to do is power on our Hero 8 Black and then point it at the QR code. And as you can see there, it's now updated the time. It's a very accurate time rate down to the millisecond. And that could be very important if you're editing with multiple GoPros. You want the time codes to be exact. The problem with setting a time on a GoPro manually is you can only set it to the nearest minute. So that can create a lot of inaccuracies if you're going to be editing with multiple GoPros. Another really interesting one is motion detection. You can actually set your GoPro to start recording upon motion. There's a lot of really useful scenarios where that would come in. Myself, I sometimes like to set up my GoPro at my bird feeders and capture birds coming in to eat different ones. So that's definitely going to come in really handy. So to do that, let's go to the motion detection QR code. You can see here we actually get some options we can set first. Let's take a look at them here. You can see we can set sensitivity from 1 being low to 9, which is very high. You can set a start delay because once you activate it, you want to be able to uh, set the camera and get out of the shot. You can set the motion mask and that helps the GoPro from accidentally recording constantly moving things like branches, they have leaves there as an example. And then it allows us to set how long we want it to record for after the motion stops. So lastly here, you can see we have another option called repeat motion capture. If we take the check mark out of there, it will only record motion once. So if you set your GoPro, and some motion happens, it will record it and then stop. After that, the GoPro will just go back to normal. So if more motion happens, it's not going to record it. If we leave a check mark in repeat capture motion, it's going to record motion indefinitely until we tell it to stop. So let's go ahead and test it out. I've adjusted a few things there. So all we now have to do is scan it. And uh, you can see here it's giving us a countdown. Now I've just set the camera down there. I know you can't see the screen, but you'll be able to hear it when it starts recording. You can see here when I put my hand in front of it, now it didn't beep there, but you can see it is recording. I'm gonna set that down and let it stop once it doesn't detect motion. So it's doing its countdown. So there it's stopped recording. And it's still scanning, so if I go in front of it again, you can see there, it's now recording again. And it'll keep doing that until you hit the shutter button and then it'll stop and get rid of that QR code. So now 
it won't do any more motion recording. So that's a really handy feature, and I'm sure you can think of a lot of good case scenarios where that would come in handy. There's a ton of different things you can use the QR codes for. Another really interesting one here is for doing extra long time lapses. So we can go in here and set different parameters. If you want to capture, say, a construction project over seven days, you can go in and set that slider to the number of days you can set by the hour. It then tells us how many captures it will take and how long the time lapse will be. It only works in photo time lapse mode because what it does is it powers on the camera, takes the capture, and then powers off the camera. If it was in video mode, it would have to leave the camera running, and of course the battery would be drained. And they have another really interesting option here for those who like to capture sunset and sunrise time lapses. You can see here it states that it uses the GPS in the camera so it knows where you are located in the world and that way it can set the appropriate start and stop time. You can see here we have the start time. You can set it to however long you want to start recording before either the sunrise or sunset. We can switch back and forth between sunrise and sunset and how long we want to record after the sunrise or sunset is done. So that's kind of nice if you want to capture a sunrise but you don't want to get out of bed early in the morning. You can actually just set your GoPro up the night before and have the uh, camera do all the work for you. There's other things here you can do too. You can do your own file naming. You can do a video burn in overlay. So if you, uh, kind of like a security camera, you know how it'll have text burned right into the video. I'm not really sure how useful that would be, but I guess in some scenarios that uh, might be useful to some people. Uh, another really nice one here is that you can actually have 12 gigabyte files. That's something I'm gonna play around with here coming up. Sometimes when I record with my GoPros for my YouTube channel, the file sizes get quite big and you know that GoPro will only save them in four gigabyte increments. So then you got a whole bunch of files you gotta sort through. The only caveat to it right now in its current form, and that may change, is that uh, if you have a large file like that, you cannot play it back directly on the GoPro. It'll work fine when it's on a computer, but just won't play back on your GoPro. And another really interesting one, and this is one that I think a lot of people will make use of, is, your, is the custom QR code creator. And here we can set all different things. And it can come in handy for a lot of different reasons. Uh, first off, say you have three GoPros that you film with. Uh, say you're capturing something and you want different angles. You can make a QR code that sets the resolution, everything you want, the timestamp. That way all you have to do is scan all three GoPros and everything is going to be identical. You don't have to go into every GoPro, make sure everything is the same. But not only that, you could have several of these QR codes ready to go. So if you need to switch back and forth between different shooting styles, you can do so easily just by scanning a QR code. You don't have to go into the GoPro every time and manually change things. When you do it manually, you always open yourself up to error. You know, you forget to set something. Uh, with the QR code, you don't have to worry about it. And you can see they give you all kinds of options. It allows you to set the mode, like say you want to shoot video, say you, you want it at 4K, 30 frames per second. We can put it to narrow. We can turn hyper smooth on or off. Then of course we can go into ProTune controls and then set all our ProTune information. Then again, if you want to set your date and time accurately, you can put that in there. And you can see it's going to update by the second. But if you need it to be very precise, you can set it to 100th of a second. And there you go there. Again, we would just have to scan it. You can see here we have an option for setting delayed actions. And uh, that's how GoPro set it up in that example where they were filming the rockets. You know, so that's kind of handy. But in the delayed actions, there's actually a lot of really interesting things you can do. Say you're going to do some motovlogging and you've got this mounted on your motorcycle or any vehicle for that matter. And uh, you don't want to capture a lot of dead time. You can actually set to start recording at GPS velocity. So say you want to record when only your vehicle is moving at 10 kilometers an hour or faster. You can set that. So if you come up to a traffic light and you're stopped, the GoPro will stop recording. As soon as the vehicle starts moving and hits that threshold, it will then go ahead and start again. So yeah, some really interesting stuff there, and it'll be kind of exciting to see what else they add over the coming weeks, coming months, and whether some of these new features will be baked right into uh, the Hero 9 possibly this fall. I know myself I'll be making good use of the new motion capture features and the new time-lapse features. I'll be using that quite a bit this summer. Well, folks, just a quick look at the new GoPro Labs and the QR-based features. Uh, some interesting stuff. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Is it something that you're interested in? Are you going to try it out on your Hero 8 Black? I want to thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.